Hello there. I wanted a sort of a slick uh, used car dealer voice and um, tried everything I could to get another actor to come up to the performances that, uh, that Tony had, and I just couldn't find anybody to do it. And, um, and that was one of the reasons why I ended up with James Earl Jones as Darth Vader, because it really takes the top class actor to pull off that kind of a kind of an idea to really be able to get into a part uh, where you're just putting your voice over a, an animated character or you know in, in this case it's not even an animated character because it's, it's a character that's already been shot so it's a reverse of what you get to do in animation in animation you get to sort of act it and create it in this one you're sort of working within the confines of what somebody else has already created you know the, the, the movement and the the, the timing and all that sort of thing has been determined for you. And to be able to come up with a really excellent performance given that, if you're not the one that's actually doing it, it's extremely difficult. This was the first set I ever saw out in Tunisia. You know, on the other shot, uh, when I says to Artu, you know, come on, let's go, yeah. I've already seen them, <laughs> so they ought to be kind of in the doorway. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to cut it, but... That whole end of it is a little tricky. You just throw it all away. You cut me out of this, make it easy. He has a way of tilting his head or raising it back that's, you, it just, it says more probably than a person would do. The face itself has no expression. But I find working with Tony Daniels, who plays the part, you read expressions into that face. To me, he has an incredibly mobile face. He looks quizzical. He's, uh, you know, when he's in danger. I can't stop myself making all the faces and smiling or frowning, looking worried. Even though I'm way behind something, nobody can see what I'm doing. But for myself, I'm doing all the actions. And people come up and they take the face and they say, oh, I'll try this on. And they put it on and how they take it off again because they can't bear it, you know. I don't know, there's something wrong with me that I can put up with it. I rather love 3 PO. I think he's, uh, he's a nice guy. I think he gets <laughs> a rough time, but, but that's part of the, the magic of it. There are so many new characters and situations and effects. I thought they would have used them all up on the first Star Wars. And, you know, I arrive in the studio and there's something quite magical to see in some new monster. I saw one today, a great sort of splodge thing. And uh, it's, of course, great fun to act with all that. And it's very stimulating. Three PO is, uh, I think, very like an English butler. He's that particularly British sort of person, very archaic and rather uh, out of his time. And action! And consequently, he finds all the things that happen in Star Wars, you know, the battles, the explosions, all the nasty characters like Darth Vader. He finds that very worrying. Tony. <laughs> With 3PO, I really I think he's one of the more human characters in the in the in the film. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the video. May the force be with you. Impressive. The most impressive.